Hello there. This is my classroom at Chetburn Road. As you can see at the moment, it's rather dark. Now this is largely due to me having the blinds down and the lights off. So can we solve that problem in some way? Hmm, I suspect we can. And there you have the brilliance of some fluorescent light tubes being turned on. Look at the difference it makes to the level of illumination in the room. Hmm, but I have a question. Now that would have probably been a lot easier if I just simply said I have a question, how do fluorescent tubes work? Now you're probably wondering why watching, whoops, sorry about that, why watching this very poorly produced video, which has been clearly made by someone with no idea of what they're doing. Well, the answer is, the school has recently given all physics teachers an iPad, and since these cost £750, I thought I'd better use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch a film on how fluorescent light tubes work. So, the story begins with an electron. Okay, now these are fired through the fluorescent tube and they're accelerated as they pass through a potential difference across that tube. Now the tube is filled with gas, usually neon or sometimes mercury gas, and what can happen is the electron can collide with an atom of that gas. Now the energy in the electron is not enough to ionize the gas, which is starting off at its ground state. So instead, the atom, having been hit by an electron, becomes excited. Perhaps it's watching this video, okay? And what that means is we get an atom of gas with some excited electrons, okay? Now, fairly obviously, what then has to happen is the electron has to drop back down to its ground state. In other words, it de-excites, and that atom is... Oh, I forgot to draw the atom off. <laughs> So that atom then returns to the ground state. There we go. I should at this point explain this is the second time I've recorded this video because when I recorded it the first time, I wasn't holding the iPad the right way and the film was upside down. Okay? <coughs> so when that happens, so we've got the atom of gas with the excited electron, the excited, turning back to the ground state, that releases a photon. Okay? Now, the photon that's released is very high frequency. Okay, because it's got quite a lot of energy, it's a high frequency, and it's actually in the UV range. So we can't see UV, we can only see obviously the visible light section, very, very small region of the electromagnetic spectrum. But these photons released in the UV range hit what's on the outside of the fluorescent tube, which is a phosphor coating. And you can tell that that's special because I did that in green pen. Now what happens then is that an electron in the phosphor coating and bonds that photon and becomes very, very excited. Okay? So electron in the phosphor coating gets very, very excited. Now so far we've not actually got any light being emitted by our fluorescent tube. Okay? If we have a look at our room here and it's lighted, so far we've not actually got any light here. That I'll probably send you a bit dizzy, so let's stop doing that and let's get back to what's going on in the tube. So we've just had a photon emitted from our atom of gas because an electron de-excited. It's been absorbed by an electron in the phosphor coating, which has become very excited. Now, if that electron just returned to its ground state in one step, we would be no better off because we would still then have a photon in the UV region being produced. Fortunately, what happens that electron cascades down the energy levels, returning to the ground state in about two or three steps, usually three. So at each stage, there's the electron going from energy level three to two, it releases a photon. At the next stage, it goes from energy level two to one, releases a photon. At the next stage, we've got a bit of a problem because I run out of whiteboard, so it goes from stage, sorry, energy level one to zero, and there we go, there's my very clever solution. I stuck a mini whiteboard next to my big whiteboard to show that third photon. 
Okay, so that process of that electron cascading down the energy levels in the phosphor coating releases three photons, all of lower energy than our UV photon that came from the excited gas. Okay, two of those will be in the visible light region. One of them typically is in the infrared region, so that just produces a bit of heat. We can't see that one, meaning that the fluorescent tube isn't 100% efficient. But two out of three visible light photons isn't bad, and it's about 80% efficient overall. Okay, so hopefully, by watching this poor video, you've learned a little bit about fluorescent tubes. That cascading of the electron in the phosphor coating is ultimately what makes them bright, enabling us to revel in the illumination of the fluorescent tube. Okay, so let's just revel in that for a moment. Mmm, brightness.